Welcome to the Art of Procurement podcast. I'm Philip Eitzen, a 20-year procurement practitioner, former head of procurement, advisor to procurement leaders around the world, and the founder and managing director of Art of Procurement. My team and I work with our global network of subject matter experts to help companies elevate procurement impact whether that's through building and implementing transformation programs, sustainably reducing external expenses, or leveraging AOP Mastermind, our learning and development platform for companies of all sizes. You're listening to our flagship podcast, where we pull back the curtain and shine a light on the strategies, tactics, and tools that leading procurement teams are using to align their results with the needs of the business. said that you only get one chance to make a good impression and for procurement professionals how you handle that first meeting with a new stakeholder that can be the difference between the stakeholder never engaging with you again or it can be the start of a highly collaborative partnership well unfortunately when it's a stakeholder for a category that you're not a deep subject matter expert in it can often be a losing battle. And so in today's podcast, I'm actually going to talk about how to nail that first meeting with a stakeholder using an approach that sales professionals use. And no doubt they have used it on you as well. And it's called the discovery call. Before we jump into today's main topic, I want to thank you as always for listening in and investing your time today with me. And I just want to share something that my team and I have been working flat out over the past two or three weeks on which is to bring you what we believe is going to be a different kind of virtual procurement event. In an industry article of a webinar that I actually hosted last week, it was with um, Hackett Group and with iValuer, the reporter started off with a following statement. And she said, disasters have a way of elevating procurement operations to saviors of the day, week or month. When the crisis is over, they're a cost center. And that lead to that article you know, I think really highlights what the challenge facing procurement is today. So how do we seize this moment to change the narrative uh, when we get back to something resembling normalcy? Um, And I I think that how we do that is really going to drive whether procurement is seen as, you know, this specialist organization that gets put in the box next time there's a crisis or next time there's some cost savings to uh, to be had but actually reposition us so that uh, we're one that actually helps the success of our businesses over the long term. And so this event that we created, it's go over two days, it's virtual on October the 6th and the 7th, and it's called Mastermind Live. And that event is going to explore just those questions. So over the course of six hours, we're going to be combining keynote sessions, workshops, and expert Q&As with a series of subject matter experts and um and folks from inside and outside the procurement industry. So if you want procurement to have a more impactful role within your organization, or for you personally in your job, then this is definitely the event for you. Now, one of the areas of focus that we've been working on is to bring tactics and strategies that are used by professionals outside of procurement into the procurement profession. And for example, in our CPO track for the event, we actually have sessions with Stephanie Thum, who is an expert in designing customer experiences with Tom Orgenthaler, who is a leading authority on influencer marketing, and Kale Tully, who is a head of account growth and sales at Sprout Social. These sessions are going to bring the principles of service design, advocacy, and sales to how do we create, use those techniques to create deeper connections with our internal and our external stakeholders. The general session is going to include fireside chats, ask the expert Q&As, Um, where we're going to dig into specific category insights and it's going to have some workshops. So an example is we'll have a workshop led by Kate Vitasek, the author of Vested and a faculty member at the University of Tennessee to help us create a plan of action to improve your most critical supplier relationships. Now, the great thing about this event that we're putting on is we wanted to make this free for the entire procurement community. So to learn more and to register to get your free tickets, just go to artofprocurement.com slash mastermind live. That's artofprocurement.com slash mastermind live. I really do hope that you can join us, if even for just one of those sessions, because I know it's so hard to take time out of your calendars. By registering for the entire event, you'll be able to build your own agenda in our event tool 
and just attend the, the sessions that appeal to you the most or that align best with your calendar. So again, that's artofprocurement.com slash mastermind live. Okay, let's go into the uh, the main topic then today. And the idea of bringing in concepts from outside of procurement is something that I just talked about for Mastermind Live is what inspired me to talk about the discovery call in today's podcast. So first of all, let me set the scene. You're meeting a stakeholder for the first time. It may be because you're new to a role or it's an area of spend that you're trying to engage in for the first time. Or perhaps your stakeholder is new in their role. Or it could be somebody that has just reached out. They've sent you an email, uh, given you a voicemail. They've reached out to procurement for the first time for help. So how do you respond? Well, when I think about my career as a practitioner and what I often see as a, um, a consultant is that we probably respond in one of two ways. You know, the first way is to show up and politely explain the way that procurement works. Here's the sourcing process. Here's the policy. These are the reasons why you should, or perhaps if I had a mandate, why you must work with me as procurement. And this is all the information that I need for you, uh, from you, I'm sorry, to take things to the next step. Or, you know, I turn up ready to ask questions to better understand their goals, objectives, problems they may have with a particular supplier. You're searching for a pain point where I could jump in and say, hey, procurement can help you with that. I can help you with that. Sometimes that would lead to a collaborative relationship. Sometimes they'd say that, well, everything's great. You know, I don't really need your help. Um, and I'd nod and I wouldn't necessarily have a good response to that. I think from my career in reality, my approach was always to listen first, but I didn't necessarily have a consistent structure around that conversation. And so moving from being a practitioner to a provider, I started to see the amount of structure that is involved in the sales process. So imagine the seven step procurement process um, or the five step or the six step or whatever it is that you have in your organization or the category management process with all the different bells and whistles. Imagine all of that, but apply it to sales instead. And so then over the past five years leading out to procurement, I've had to learn and apply all of these different sales processes and procedures to my own business. And it's definitely been an ongoing and I think uh, a never ending process. So I'm not going to go into today's call into all the ins and outs of nurturing a lead or a stakeholder to get to the point of a first call, a first meeting. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the SQLs, MQLs, SDLs, IADAs, AB tests. You know, you think procurement has a lot of acronyms. Uh, sales definitely has a lot of their own. But what I do want to talk about is how to make the most of that first meeting that you have with a stakeholder. And in sales parlance, that first meeting is called the discovery call. And it's the most important meeting in the sales process. How that discovery call goes sets the tone for the rest of the relationship, or it can re end the relationship you know, right there and then. Um, the purpose of that discovery call in sales is to build rapport while determining whether or not there's a potential fit between the pain points, the goals, the priorities of your prospect and the product or service that you provide. You know, in other words, that call is really all about them. So let's look at that from a procurement perspective. It's most definitely to build rapport and again to learn about the pain points of your stakeholder, the goals, the objectives, the challenges and the priorities that your stakeholder has. And rather than determining the potential fit with your product or services as in the typical sales process, for procurement, it's about best understanding how you can provide value, ideally in the short term, that really helps them achieve a specific goal or objective or mitigate a particular fear while at the same time demonstrating your expertise, um, the, your ability to really help them. Now, I want to break down the three different components of the discovery call, which are the planning phase, the call itself, and then the follow-up. Well, all successful discovery calls are based on good preparation. And I think it's fair to say that that's the hardest thing for all of us is finding the time to plan. And when you think about preparation for one of these discovery calls with your stakeholder, the first meeting with your stakeholder, preparation should really revolve around three different areas. Firstly, it's about building rapport. So you want to find commonalities that help you build a rapport at the very beginning of a meeting. This may be a shared interest, an educational background that's shared, um, 
or because it's an internal discussion, you know, with an internal stakeholder, you may be able to find something on your intranet where they've been achieved a particular award or an achievement or something that you can talk about. Or you may have been distantly involved in the same project, you know, even though you never actually work together um, personally on the project together. The, the, some kind of dig for some connection. You can do that, uh, like I say, looking internally, but you could also do that looking at their LinkedIn profile or if they're active on Twitter, as an example. Lots of folks, uh, you know, leave an online footprint these days where you can get a better understanding of some of their interests um, and bring that up as you um, as trying to build rapport in the first section of the call or the meeting, if it's face-to-face -face meeting. Secondly, in your prep, you want to be prepared with information that you can share later. So facts about changes in the supply market for the category of spend or the specific product or service in question, if it's uh, you know a meeting where you're trying to get involved in new spend, or the past history of a particular important supply to them. In sales, um, this is really known as knowing your product. But with your procurement hat on, this is knowing your category or knowing um, your procurement value proposition. Any information that you can share that positions you as an expert is going to give the stakeholder a lot more confidence that you actually have value to them over and above perhaps helping them run a process, which may be their coming in point uh, to the first discussion. You know, that may be the way that they perceive you before this first conversation that you have with them. And thirdly, from a preparation perspective, is their objectives, or at least the objectives of the function they work in. You know, you'll be able to ask a lot more specific questions in the meeting itself about this, but being informed in advance about, um, you know, what it is that drives them, or what is the, the purpose of um, their function. Uh, maybe it's something you can look in an annual report at to see, um, um, you know, if it's what well, the connections of what they do are to the overall pillars of the business, for example, the strate strategic objectives of the business. Um, knowing this in advance is going to really help show that you have an understanding and, and with an understanding, and this is really important, becomes empathy with their opportunities and their challenges. So we've done the prep. We're going to move to the meeting itself. And as I mentioned before, this is really all about them. So start the meeting by building rapport, you know, you've done your research uh, to find a, um, a point of discussion. Um, and small talk can sometimes be difficult, but identifying and talking about something that's specific about them, that's not just, hey, how's the weather, uh, really helps to build a personal connection. And that helps you to start to build trust right from the very beginning of the conversation. And then the meat of the conversation is your questions. You want to spend the vast majority of the meeting as well in active listening mode. So what I mean by that is be prepared with questions that help identify those pain points, those goals, those objectives we talked about, but focus on making this as conversational as possible. You know, it's not simply a Q and A session and don't go in with your questions that you've prepped and, and think I either I have to get through all these or I can only ask these questions. Let the conversation go naturally. Um, but it doesn't mean you don't have to have a list of questions prepared. Um, and to be honest, you know, when you have those basic questions, those that are at least going to provide kind of the overall structure to the conversation for you, it's likely that they're not going to need to vary too much from stakeholder to stakeholder. So if you're running, um, you know, multiple categories or if you're uh, in a leadership role in procurement, then, you know, you can prepare for your teams a list of kind of thought starter questions for each one of these, uh, for these kinds of meetings that they can just tailor. Uh, that's specific to the situation that they're in. Now, as you're asking about the challenges or the opportunities that you may be able to help them with, follow up by asking what happens if that pain is not solved or the challenge is not effectively taken advantage of. So this helps the stakeholder quantify what it means to them to solve it or to take advantage of this opportunity. You know, how important is it for them to take action? And once you've gone through that, we should be towards the end of the meeting at this point. So now is the time you do get to show a little bit about your expertise and to agree next steps. So a great way to show your expertise is taking on board all the, um, the listing you've done, the answers that the stakeholder has provided with you, is to paint a vision of the future for them. So having learned a bit more about the stakeholder, you can start a discussion about what the future state could look like. And this is based on your knowledge of the product. And I say product in air quotes. So, uh, you know, in our case, it's your knowledge of the procurement functionality or capabilities or 
uh, if it's an issue that's related to the procurement process, or it's uh, the knowledge of your category or the spending question, if the pains or the opportunities or the conversation just generally is related to uh, products and services that they buy. So you can share in that situation, for example, market dynamics such as pricing trends or new approaches and technologies that might help them achieve similar or better outcomes. Because more more often than not, the stakeholder that you talk about, they're going to have a general knowledge of the supply market and the things that they're responsible for because that's something that they're um, positioned as being an expert in. But what can you bring that's new, uh, either a new perspective on some information that's already known or uh, new information? What can you bring to the table that they may not necessarily have known or thought about? That's how you're going to position yourself as a subject matter expert. And finally, you can agree the next step. So a skilled salesperson will close the call by restating all the pertinent points that were made through discussion to really form a, a tacit understanding. And then we'll make a recommendation on the next step. So your goal is really to get an agreement on that next step. Now, you may think the work is over once you have had the meeting, uh, but it's not completed. And again, this is a hard step, much like the preparation, not in terms of difficulty, but in terms of the focus and bandwidth that you have. And that's memorializing really the discussion with a short after call summary in writing. And I can't stress how important that is. Quickly putting in writing the key points of discovery, the information that you shared to paint the vision of the future, uh, you know, your understanding of their situation and what they need. Um, next steps really ensures that nothing's forgotten. It helps to demonstrate your understanding of their pain points. And it provides an opportunity to really get a further agreement on what was discussed. So when you send this, always ask the other stakeholder. And it can just be an email. Ask them if they agree or if they have anything to add. Because then that basically becomes the, the informal formalization, if you will, of the um, discussion. And it helps continue the momentum um, that you have in, um, and gives you a framework for kind of next steps and follow-up. And so that's... In summary is the discovery call. And those three elements I said is the prep, uh, the call itself, and then that after call follow-up. Now, it's quite possible that you're listening thinking, you know what, I do all of this already. And that's quite possible. But certainly in sales, what I have observed is that those who are most successful in using this call to create closer relationships and alignment follow a process. And they're really meticulous in that planning and the post-call follow-up. And so if you are having difficulty positioning yourself as a trusted advisor or engaging um, with stakeholders, I would really recommend taking a more formal approach to that initial call. It doesn't need to be something that is, um, you know, there's adding layers of bureaucracy. It's something that once you've done it a few times, it will become natural to you. Um, but just following that same process and, you know, having yourself a checklist of what you need to do um, for example, just to make sure you've covered it, just sets you up for that conversation. Uh, it sets you up to succeed as opposed to oftentimes, at least my experience was you going to those calls never and really knowing what to expect. Okay, so that completes today's episode of Out of Procurement. If you are interested in uh, joining us in the workshops and Q&As that we have that are going to help uh, you create closer alignment with your business, and we have them led by experts such as Dr. Marcel Vollmer uh, from BCG, Jan Griffiths from Gravitas Detroit, Joanna Martinez from Supply Chain Advisors. And we have more. Uh, we'd love to see you at Mastermind Live. Just register for free. Um, it, remember, it's October the 6th and 7th. It's from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Time on both of those days. And even if you can just only attend one session. Um, if you just register, you'll get all the details of how to attend the, the session that you're able to, that, uh, that's either of interest or that fits with your calendar. So to find out more and to get your registration, just go on over to artofprocurement.com slash mastermind live. That's artofprocurement.com slash mastermind live. And registrations for mastermind live are going to close on October the 4th, Sunday, October the 4th so that we have enough time to get you all your login details for the platform for the two days itself. So we can't wait to see you. Until next week, we'll be back with another interview here on the Atta Procurement. I hope you stay safe, and I can't wait to talk to you again soon.